Van Halen rules! Sorry, that was loud. Uh, okay, so now. Excuse me. All right. <coughs> well, Smooth is one of the criteria. Welcome to the episode 78 of Talking Over Albums, blah, 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 blah. The redo, because last album was... Last, last episode was a disaster. Yeah, I don't... Even sort of salvage it. It was okay. It so I can remember it. It was okay though because that album was the absolute. We should we should talk about our talking over <laughs> that Rolling Stones album because it was right in the exact middle of unlistenable, where it wasn't bad enough to bitch yeah. about, and it wasn't there wasn't enough going on to actually it was, it was comment bad. on. It was for sure bad. It, it might be the that Poison album and <laughs> that Rolling Stones album are at the absolute epicenter of just nothing to say. Dirty Work is probably more in the middle because it wasn't hurting me. There was just nothing. Yeah. I What I remember talking about with that album was that they were not following their uh, their muse on this. They were following the crowd and trying to make something that was going to be popular. It was not their thing, and mm. they should have they stayed away from it. We had some funny quips, but all in all, I'm not... Horribly disappointed the episode didn't record. Mm-hmm. If there had to be one that didn't work out, it was probably. It was 80s garbage! I know, I just have to get way. the power cord working. I'll get a new one here. Eventually. And then the next album after that was Steel Wheels, which was basically. It's a really good album. There's some soft spots, like they all have, but. <laughs> Come on. Is that your power cord? Yeah, I've really got to get a new one. Oh. Can't. Oh, I have you. a good line of sight on the blue light. I always keep the vapor rub around for you. Hell yeah. Um, <sighs> will it ever run out of smell? I'll buy some more. Are okay. we in danger of having nasty Vaseline that has no scent? I don't. You just made me think of something kind of funny. Um, when I was growing up, we always had Vicks vapor rub, but my mom never used it. I don't know where it came from, and I don't know what the deal was, but it was like almost empty. <laughs> so it was like this. It just had like the vapor rub like around the sides of it, you know. But we never threw it away. So we, and it was like it was so old. It was made out of glass. The bottle was blue glass. Oh yeah, I everyone's <laughs> grandparent had like the vapor rub from nineteen seventy something. Yeah. And then they still have because you only need the tiniest yeah. little bit at a time. I've, but it I've, fixes f***ing everything. It's like a three lifetime supply, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, one time <laughs> I was so, uh, <laughs> this is gross, but <laughs> one time, <laughs> one yeah. time, no serious, I was so desperate last winter that I actually did stuff Vicks Vapor Rub in, uh, like, right on my nostril. <laughs> like, I've done that. Because <laughs> I just wanted to breathe <laughs> and I didn't care. You know how it ended up, but it like gets rid of f-ing everything. Oh yeah, one of my OCD things when I realize, I, I think it switches, but like when I realize like I can't really breathe through this nostril, and then I'm like, oh god, and I'm like, <laughs> like <laughs> shoving, and then I shove some vapor. Don't over there. look at me. And then I accidentally lobotomize me. myself. <laughs> That's what I get for picking my nose with an ice pick. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to cut all that out, right? Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about gross grandparent th- grandfather things. About how my grandpa would shove anything into his ear holes. It's like, it's, it's, it's like no wonder he was couldn't hear anything. He would just shove anything. Oh, that's my so mother weird was that fond you say of that. straight pins, putting them in her oh, ear. God. Yeah, he he would just grab the closest pointy thing and just shove it into his ear. My, like, if your earwax is that bad, go to a damn doctor, please. My grandpa was so hairy, and yet, for years, I never understood. It was like, he was never that grandpa with the nose hair. And I was like, and then finally, I just, I just said, what do you use to do your nose hair? And he's like, what are you talking about? My barber takes care of it. Ah. <laughs> like, who takes care of that? <laughs> you have a what? There's a guy that pulls all the hairs out of your nose or something, and he's like, what are you talking about? He, it's just part of the haircut. Like, where do you get your haircut? Uh-huh. <laughs> just some old guy. That was just part of the deal. You gave him a fistful of money, and he he took care of all the hair that wasn't supposed to be there, and hid all the hair that where it was missing that you'd like some. And 
Oh, good. Thank you, Internet. Because I have the vinyl copy of this, so I guess we're getting started. Here's... Yes. So, this is one I've wanted to do for a long time. It's Clark Kent. The suit hits his alter ego pseudonym that he did right at the beginning of when the police started. Okay. It's sort of simultaneous. I think he stopped doing it around 79 or something, but... Hmm. And then started doing, you know, focusing on mostly police stuff and other soundtrack stuff so this was kind of his own this is this is kind of his only pop album it's more of a an ep type of thing but it's called <clears throat> i can never remember the name clark kent music madness from the kinetic kid so mm. Stu- Stuart copeland from the police drummer i couldn't find it online for the longest time but and I meant to bring over the vinyl because there's this long, pointless, rambling story on the back that I'm sure he wrote. <laughs> well, and here's that a sampling. Is really it says, long. It says Clark Kent or Clerk Cunt. I should preface this by saying Stuart Copeland just has a wacky sense of humor. He's one of those people. No way. Where he's, he, yeah. Um, Clark Kent or Clerk Cunt, as his name is pronounced, in L- Langeek, the Welsh fishing village where his psyche first materialized, is a multilingual, multi instrumental, multi dexterous, multifaceted nature boy of unknown origin who has, <laughs> who has virtually revolutionized the so called sensationalist approach to pop music. And this I take issue with that. He just said where he was from, and then he said he wasn't sure where he came from. And this goes on for like an entire essay. So <laughs> that is super long. Yeah. So this this was all him. This. Uh, Hello, internet. Go look this up. It's. Yeah. So the, 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 this is essentially hit. This is all him playing everything. It's home recordings, and yet it sounds like a police album without Sting singing. <laughs> you notice you notice some of uh, Andy Summers' guitar work missing here and there. But for the most part, it's not, to me, it sounds like Zenyatta Mandata. Like that lighthearted reggae pop thing. We're having All fun right. in Jamaica and kind I, of thing. When I, found it, <laughs> when I found it, it was incredible because it felt like finding a lost police album. Uh-huh. So here's... Um, Hopefully not lost Clark because Clint. it's no good. Yeah, it's, this is fairly short. But it's, I think this is only 28 minutes long. Oh, wow. so it's a Van Halen album. <laughs> yeah, but better. <clears throat> so it was the the single was from it was don't care, which was re- uh, recorded at the same time as um, Outlandos DMR Police's first album, and they went on top of the pops. Well, he went on top of the pops in like this sort of disguise under the name Clark Clark, Clark Kent, and the rest of the police. And like the road manager or something, kind of mimed in the background, all wearing gorilla masks. Now, does anybody have a personal story about the police? Because I have a funny one. I truly do not. I thought the police were great until my dad bought Ghost in the Machine, and then I couldn't like him anymore because that's your dad's music now. <laughs> <laughs> Why you have to ruin it? God, you ruined it. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was just one of those things. You you, you you can't listen to what your dad listened to. Like, I listened to it in my childhood, and I still listen to stuff from that. But, it, like, I was at that age where you're just like, I don't want to do anything you do. Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> s- s- side note, when, when I was looking this stuff up, somebody made a little action figure of his alter ego costume, yeah. if anyone wants to see. Oh, that's adorable. So that was his thing, was, like, this black trench coat, okay. black pants, black top hat, and sunglasses. He's quite the... Um, He's wacky. It's like Slash without the hair. So I'm in a documentary one time. I, and I, it escapes what documentary it was, but they were talking to him about something, and, and it was the best part of that documentary of all the people they talked to. Oh, yeah, he, he was just like, this guy is just... What, Stuart? Yeah. He's just... Like, he's, he's, you say wacky, I say oh, he's entertaining. A I mean, he's... <laughs> he's he, so entertaining. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's a total genius, but also wacky. So he's a wacky genius. Eccentric, I guess. I guess I think people like that. Pleasant. (laughs) I like it. Okay. Let's do this. Show me something I haven't uh, heard before. All right, here's here's (laughs) Clark Kent, Rich in a Ditch. 
No, wrong one. <laughs> what the? They can't hear it anyway. All right. Pause for three seconds for, oh, for a break point. Another. Suddenly it was the New York Dolls. <laughs> All right. He does like to do that a lot. Okay, here we go. Here's Don't Care. We're cheap bastards, so we have to hear a commercial first. I know, it's only been ten seconds, but I'm in. So, <laughs> he tried to get the police to do this, but Sting wouldn't sing it. He's such a princess. He got a little bit better, and then towards the end, for Synchronicity, I believe, we've done that one, and, you know, we talked about how it was like, okay, it's the Sting show again. <laughs> it's like, like yeah. here, here's a really bad video of them on top of the pop. So, like, oh, with the this is, too. I don't know who's who, but <laughs> it's the rest of the police in the background. <laughs> you can always tell early on in the police, like, the songs that are total Stuart songs that he kind of coaxed Sting into singing. There are a few of them, but... I think generally he would just be like, I'm not doing that. And you, he would just end up singing, singing his own, kind of the Beatles formula of whoever wrote it sings it type of thing. Because the few songs that like Andy Summers wrote, he would suck my socks. <laughs> that's, that's a great line. No, I like how it's like punk and not so much ska. Yeah, it doesn't have the... That it doesn't was, have that, that reggae was, background that the police tend to yeah, that was use like for a, their, their tempo. That was like a Ramones song, Slowed Down. Like that, I It was kind of like a lot of the songs in that time period, though. Hmm. Yeah. There was yeah, a I lot mean, like, of I stuff like that. I could hear where it sounded you, a bit like the police. When, you, when you were listening to, like, you, I remember when you were watching MTV, you got a whole different picture of music than you did listening to the radio around here where we live. Because we're in the middle of nowhere, and it took forever for things to matriculate to the Midwest. Yeah, here's, it was just like here's away from home. This was the first song I ever heard. I don't know how I even came across it or found it, but I was obsessed with the song for quite a while. It's just a song about a guy moving into an apartment. I don't know if this the was a dig apartment. at Sting, but that was how Sting got his nickname: was the black and yellow striped shirt. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I don't know if that was. I mean, he he was he notoriously annoyed Sting. So, like, I love the breakdown of this. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, he still has the the like he, this whole Clark Kent project made me fully understand. I think I've said it before on the podcast on when we did. Can't hear myself. This sounds like everything that was being played in England. Mm. In that time period, I'm telling you. Yeah, but um, just like anytime you'd see that where they have the, I forget what it was called. They used to have a show that was just stuff from England on MTV. Because that's the only place I got anything different. Or my uncle would tell me about it. I remember my uncle told me about The Clash. Because he was like, I think you like this one. And gave me Combat Rock and U2's War on a tape. Mm. And <laughs> he's like, Merry Christmas. I just made you an adult or something. Like that. <laughs> oh, that sounds awfully cool for Tim. Yeah. I, <laughs> I know he had some uncool thing to say about it, but Yeah, I it was I, more like uh, well, mm, here. <laughs> I, I so, what he meant was I think you think you're at the age now where you need to start experiencing new and different sounds and things. <laughs> and you'll probably appreciate this. Took me a about a year to appreciate it, but but I kept I, popping it in every once in a while. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. But I really, really wish the police had done this song. I think this is, this is his ble- best Cl- Clark Kent song. And with that, with that little added professionalism of Sting's vocals and Andy's guitar, like I think this could have been kick-ass police song. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Are you right? balancing this out? Yeah. Giving it a little bit more rounded. These sound. the two songs we listened to so far. They're they it's like all backbone, yeah. and no fl- fill, filler yeah. like nothing's fleshing it out. Yeah, it, it lacks that. Oh, he's in the closet. It, it lacks 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 that intricate finesse that the other two guys bring to it. But I mean, it makes sense if it was basically written and performed makes, by the drummer. Here's Rich one thing and listening to this does for me is is. 
I'm immediately seeing what made the police that special. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, this is all backbone. It's got good sound, but it doesn't have the nuances of a police song. Like, where three people came together and made it this bombastic thing. But I think I think I said the same thing when we were doing Synchronicity, was that this made me realize just how much the police were his baby, because I think, especially at Synchronicity, it became a sting project. So it's, it's kind of interesting for sure, for doing sure. these bookends of the whole police story, like doing Synchronicity first and then going back to this. So I think it was hear, def- it was more punk. You hear the police in here, but not the polish. Like there's something that you get from Andy and Sting that you can hear what's missing. You yeah. know what I mean? I think you said well, something earlier producer? about how this could use this song could use an Andy Summers guitar in it or something like that. And it's just kind of like it's like oh, this is almost great. This is almost awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really, really, really good police demos. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of surprised that the police didn't end up doing any of these. I know all of this stuff was re- it was released, but I'm still surprised they didn't. Some of these are. Yeah, I can some of these are good enough. Another version of this song with Sting on the lead vocal. Okay, I have a really weird out there. Bear with me for a second. On Pandora, a lot of times they play these like weird like demos and outtakes from bands. Well, one of them I heard was like, I hear a lot of Motley Crue, uh, Dr. Feelgood outtakes. And the thing I wanted to point out was this is so much closer to the police than the songs that they started writing on that album. And it's like, how did you get from there to that song? (laughs) It's so crazy. And this sounds so close to like, it's like, Oh, this is very well, uh, like I said, backbone. It's mm-hmm. like the word backbone is what I think of when I hear these. It's like the backbone is great. And if you had a great guitarist and you had a really good singer, this song would have been on the charts, no problem. I think it's funny that it's uh, Stuart yeah. Copeland from the police. Yeah, sorry. I had to. This is all pieced together from just videos I could find. So some of the that last one was kind of a bit truncated, but you get the point. Mm-hmm. So, uh, oh, like the reason I always bring up. Uh, Zenyatta Mandata, even though Regatta de Blanc was like, would have been chronologically on, in line with this, is because Zenyatta Mandata is so heavy on just sort of jammed instrumentals, like mm-hmm. filler stuff. And there's a lot of stuff on here that could have, like the song Behind My Camel, the police did, uh, or like Masoko Tanga, or, mm-hmm. uh, that was from the first one, but like it, any, like all of those police instrumentals, these could have, like, especially this song. It's coming up called Grand Delinquent. Could have easily been on any police album. Like, really, there's nothing even missing from this. Yeah, they, this they, just they, sounds they, like the police right there. I think they might have reworked this one, or at least the basic intent of it, into... The beginning of this song just starts out... Backbone of a police song. <laughs> I, I think just, it's... He's so good at making just... It's so simple, just like these really simple riffs... I think a lot of it is his complex drumming. It makes me want to listen to the police now and like start to dissect what each person brought to the. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, it's only three people in a band, you know. Well, we can do that it's like, next. It's yeah. interesting how you can be annoyed with Sting and his personality, but if you don't have his Sting and his personality, it it all you almost like. There's no. Uh, sour to the sweet kind of thing Mm -hmm. it doesn't have the mixture or his saltiness (laughs) i think sting would be more salty he's the salty to the sweet of the music i think i think sting knew how to like bring things down to like more of a quiet sophistication in parts Uh, like he knew how to flatten things out like like stewart is very choppy there's like big blocks of interesting sound Mm -hmm. and so like occasional, so it's just like the big, unrefined statue, and you you had, you know, Sting and Andy coming in and like refining little bits here sure. and there. You know what this reminds me of? Uh, it's gonna be sound, this is gonna sound out there, but this sounds like he's doing all the instruments, right? It's yeah, like he's, he's 
Because it's like the first Foo Fighters album where Dave Grohl did everything. It's kind of like it when you when you know what's happening, you're going, oh, that's what's different. Yeah. There's no collaboration here. This is one guy's vision. Mm-hmm. Nobody adding anything to it. It's just what he wants it to be. And it doesn't make it bad. It just, it's kind of like, there. you know, there's no tweaks. It's all whatever you want it to be, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think I should bring up his guitar playing, where it's not great, but he has a distinct style. It sounds like a drummer playing a guitar, where he's, you know, he... Kind of chopping it like he's hitting yeah, he, it. Yeah, he's, ch- <laughs> he's very choppy, but... It gives it. It's a distinct guitar style. But you know, that's like a that's like the second guitar on a lot of uh, police albums. So it's like he has an input. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> interesting. I wonder if he's ever. I've never looked closely enough at the liner notes. I wonder if he's ever played. Here's Gorilla. Gorilla. Yeah. So he doesn't sing on a lot of these, but. Well, this sounds down. like somebody playing around with their. Soundboard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's like stuff all over the place. I hear the same instrument play being here. I hear different notes and different ears and stuff. So I, I know the I know the chorus guitar was super popular in the '80s, but the guitar tone on this is super similar to a lot of the stuff on Police. But I think Andy Summers tended to do more of the the whoosh, choral flange, right? The more wishing. I like well, that little riff. A melodic reggae type sound, but then rocking it up a little bit. That's always the police to me. Mm-hmm. It's like there's this Caribbean thing, but with electric guitars and gang, 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 gang. gang. You know, it's like this. there's a... They find a way to make it a little edgier. It's like, oh, this is dancey and flowy. No, it's not. Because <laughs> you'll, never, you'll never hear that hard of a snare... In a in a reggae song or anything, they're not going rap rap. You know, you're never going to hear that gunshot yeah. snare. It's no, like nothing that's interesting to me is how generally directionless these songs are, but I still love them. They're not building up to anything or really going anywhere. It's just like this fun kinetic. Energy. It's like he comes like up I, with all the meandering parts of police songs. Yeah, like there's a <laughs> there's a whole symphonic thing just now that was. I'm sure it was. A, a oh, Casio or whatever, again. trying to sound like a theremin. He's playing around yeah, with the soundboard a lot on this song because I'm hearing the guitar like different strings are coming through different, ear, you know, different mm-hmm. sides. It's not in the middle until he comes back and starts singing it again. I have no idea what he's saying in these lyrics. I don't know either. It's so in the background. I think his Gina. voice is just there to fill space mostly. It's another another instrument. See, it's the power of a great producer artist. He's a terrible singer, but he knows how to put his voice <laughs> into. Yeah, it's like he's it's like he's doing background vocals, and nobody there's no there's no main vocal. And I I can't listen to this without bringing up the police song, uh, the one. There's a house on my street, and it looks real neat. Oh, any other day. Um, when I first got into police, that was one that immediately stuck out to me because it was just so different from every other police song here's my old school he likes to play with the rhythm of the drums he gets to do whatever he wants on this album isn't it and he's playing with it he kind of it, this always sounds like he almost just wants to make an instrumental but he knows nobody will listen to it unless it has <laughs> lyrics in it so I gotta write about something <laughs> that's what it makes me think it's just like, uh, I'm going to tell you what I ate for breakfast this morning. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, that, that's interesting. Uh, I think you need some kind of scientist or something. We probably talked about it before, but if this, were, if this were just an instrumental album, it's like I think your brain would start to tune out even if it's good. But there's something about an intermittent, an intermittent, intermittent voice that like... Keeps you engaged. I don't know, that fills the void or something. Like for Plus, some for some reason, we just like hearing it gives people. You a connection One of the things that yeah. makes pop that music, music accessible is it explains what the song is about. Classical music, you have to either be told what it's about or figure out what it's about. You know. But then there's that thing as the artist trying to decide: does this work as just an instrumental, or do I need to 
sing something in parts of it or so Look at coming Ziggy. to that decision. The world is his bed. <laughs> And so is my bed when I'm not here to chew him <laughs> up. It. He can't sing very well. But, you know, it's almost like uh, I love that uh, Keith Richards album, Talk is Cheap. It's mm-hmm. like, not that Keith Richards can sing all that well, but he loves it so much. He loves his songs. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's almost like I like it any. You know, it's I kind of like this like that. It's kind of like you can tell he likes the song. Yeah, like this album just sounds like he was having a lot of fun. It's it's kind of yeah. contagious. And I spent really no time listening to it. <laughs> They're very quick, poppy mm-hmm. timed, like three minute songs, three minutes and a half. Yeah, so it's almost over. One more track. What's this one? Excesses. I think it's just another instrumental. Oh my god. Seriously, I just keep thinking every time I listen to this, it's like, because I know who it is, it's just like, this is the backbone of a really good police song. <laughs> just flesh it out a little bit, and it's a, you know. I should say that, that it's not really reggae. Mm-hmm. Like I th- He invented a, sh- a subgenre of, reg- of punk reggae, yeah. because real reggae is like, like it's fairly straightforward, just missing doing the. That's what everybody thing. was doing. Just but, in London at that time that I, I know, mm-hmm. I've I've seen the documentaries and stuff. It was like all about like it was all about this. This is where that red red wine band came from, and uh, the Clash. You know, it's just like this. Everybody had this like okay. Punk's great and everything, but it doesn't have any like cool melodies or any. You know, it's like. Punk's great, but you can't really dance to it. <laughs> chicks won't show up. We gotta make music that chicks show up for. <laughs> yeah. I, I wish a, a drummer was here, because I have no idea what I'm talking about. And tiny plaid skirts. I know it when I hear it, but like, it's he's taking the he's taking the implied beat because in in reggae you're always it's still mostly this, but in the drum pattern you're you're always skipping something. Him. He's more like forward leaning in it while also doing like the skipping a. Yeah. Again, I can't even describe what it is, but I think he's, what it he's is taking wait, the wait. spirit of that drumming style, that he rhythm has the style. urgency. Of, he's adding the urgency of a punk song to reggae. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good way to put it. Because you have to remember, they called it post punk because nobody could figure out what the hell it was. You know, it's like. I don't know. What do you call it? Let's call it post punk because it's kind of like punk, but it's not. <laughs> but I've heard his his interviews where he extensively talks about the reggae beat and how he's so fascinated with it. They never, I think maybe in one interview he talks about it, but I don't remember what it, what he said. Where he's just talking about his take on the reggae beat. He has so many interviews. He'll talk for hours and hours about everything. And yeah, so that's fascinating. If anyone's listening at home. You, Here's the, la- here's the last track, uh, Theme for Kinetic Ritual. We are really starting to uh, understand like Stuart Copeland's uh, contributions to the police just by listening to something he did by himself, right? Yeah. It's like his contributions were a really cool reggae beat with the push of the urgency, the in-your-face of... But like like I was talking about the snare, like he's the like, punk pow, you'll never hear a hear somebody rapping on that Affectation? snare drum like that. It's really interesting to me. Yeah, most of this has that bit of punk thread going through it. And I, I like how you can play with time, like the sense of time in music. How like a like a two minute song can say what it needs to say. With this album, the first time I heard it. I no, I probably listened to it like three or four times before I realized it was only it was less than a half hour long. And I was like, wow, because there's just so much going on in every song. Yeah, this sounds really like a lot of neat ideas that he nobody wanted to do with him, so he just said, like, "Can I do something with this?" <laughs> it's like, probably. Ah. It's like you guys are sometimes stupid. I'm going to put this to... out, and I'm going to be more famous than you. No. <laughs> sometimes you just have to make your art. I never really, it's funny, I just said that, and I was like, I've seen that guy in interviews, Stuart Copeland, I've seen him in interviews, and he's not like that at all. He thinks he's the shit. 
He doesn't have to prove anything. I don't, I'll bet you he never thought he had to prove anything. Well, you Probably just... why Sting was so annoyed by him, because Sting always thought he was the sh- you, right. you can tell by the swagger. <laughs> and Andy always Summers thought he was the shit. Just was the shit. Yeah, it was just kind of <laughs> meh. Oh, like what you're saying, one of the most inspiring quotes. It was from a interview from like five or six years ago. But he said, he said, he said, don't worry about anything. He's like, just plug in and play. Don't try to get. Anything. He's like, let the idea come first. Who doesn't matter if it sounds good. I was like, yes. Well, Andy like Summers, he's the one funny. that did a lot of like movie, like soundtrack work and stuff. Well, they both did. Uh, like, well, I don't, I don't know if Andy I Summers. I can't remember. But he's he's <laughs> he's done like. I'd have to look it up. I yeah. can't remember what Andy Summers like, like did after the police. But I think well, I, his name soul, comes I mean, up. Mostly like jazz fusion. <laughs> he did he did an album with who we always bring up uh, King Crimson guy, guitarist guy. Yeah, whatever. But he Chuck did it. Barry? Uh, for all the video game fan, fans, he, he has this album that video game fans seem to love. Is from was that Drag Spyro the Dragon video game? He did the soundtrack for that. Uh, Stuart. All right, that's over. What police album do we want to do? Well, we should do Banana something. Bananarama. That... What'd you call it? <laughs> that's not called Bananarama. That's a whole nother band, Chris. I mean, we could pick one out of a hat. So it's no, gonna play one that, that coincides with three. this. Well, it's gonna be Regatta de Blanc. That's probably. fine. Okay. It's been a long time since we've done a police album. Eh. But I've really wanted to do Zenyatta Mandata, and that, and that one's pretty short. These well, two names, I feel like, how can they not just be the same album? They're not, but... All right, flip a coin, vote. I, I will know. go he with wants, which one Brett wants to do. I'm fine with that. One of them has... And Chris doesn't know what you're talking I about. I can't pronounce either one of them, so... <clears throat> Zenyatta Mandata. Or Regatta de Blank. I'm just going to call him Bananarama. I think I have more to say about Zenyatta Mandata, because it's... it's it's more of a filler album. I like Zenyatta Mandata because I think I heard somewhere that it doesn't actually mean anything. They made it up. <laughs> I, I think I think they I think they they all generally approximate something. It's like a bastardized. All right, so yeah, this album gets a short to the point. Every time I love it. looking up things, Basically, it I love that. boring, so I'm just going to guess and say, I think they just made that up. So yeah, I, I give it... Hakuna Matata? I give it a solid 8 out of 10. No frills, just a solid 8. Yeah, I'm in. I'm glad I've heard that. Uh... Love you, Stuart. If you're ever bored and, it's fine. and you happen to hear this on YouTube, come to this address. <laughs> Just, I'm you know, glad I heard it. I we love may, you. I probably won't seek it out again. But <laughs> it's love fine. you, Stuart. I'll seek it out again, and I'll hump the vinyl copy when I get home. <laughs> there you go. Horrible paper cut on my nutsack. All 